My name is Jake, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, the first thing that we're gonna jump on is on my 1993 Jeep Cherokee. Uh, the upper control arm bushing keeps wearing out, so we're gonna go ahead and replace it with a uh, enduro style joint, uh, or flex joint, that's gonna be able to have rotation in it, but not actually wear out like a poly bushing does. This is the Jeep we'll be working on today. It's a 1993 Cherokee. Underneath, we do have uh, Dana 44s. Um, has a Barnes four-wheel drive truss on the front. Um, we have Heim steering and track bar from Barnes four-wheel drive. And inside, we have a Yukon diff cover with uh, Yukon Air zip lockers, um, front and rear. Basic cheap bumper uh, with a Badlands winch, which and then on the back, we have a swing out bumper. Uh, and again, another Dana 44 with Air zip lockers. So the primary focus of today's video is replacing the bushing that is in this upper control arm mount. Um, like I said, this is a truss from Barnes Four Wheel Drive. Um, they come with a stock um, poly bushing that slides in here. Um, those, I've unfortunately blown through a few of them. So we're going to be cutting off this entire mount, welding on that flex joint, um, and then reinstalling this upper control arm. So that way we can have full flex and articulation in the suspension um, without wearing out that bushing. All right, so now that we have the vehicle supported by jack stands, as well as the axle lower down supported by jack stands, this will give us a little bit more clear room to be able to remove that upper control arm. Um, and now that the vehicle is not supported on top of the axle, it'll prevent it from rotating and possibly harming me. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and also remove this coil spring uh, for a little bit easier access to be able to get in here to cut and weld and everything. All right, so next I'm gonna go ahead and remove this bolt from the upper control arm. So as you can see, this bushing's totally worn out. Um, I could pull it off totally by hand, um, just completely wall it out to a not even round shape anymore. This is the Barnes Wheel Drive section that comes with the truss. Um, so our next thing is we're gonna go ahead and get the plasma cutter out, and we're gonna cut this off on both sides, grind it flush, and then we can weld on the new flex joint. So I do have my air locker lines and breather lines attached to the control arm. So I'm going to go ahead and clip these zip ties, hold that on. So that's free now. Now we can go ahead and take this bungee and we're going to get the upper control arm up and out of the way. I would say it's like the cheapest plasma cutter that you get off Amazon. I think it was about 250 bucks. Safety third. We got um, a welding blanket over here covering up the air locker lines and breather lines to make sure we don't melt those accidentally. Got the ground on the axle side, and now it's time to slice it off. It's not the cleanest cut in the world, but we'll go back and clean up with the angle grinder. Now nice and silky smooth. Um, so we're gonna start fabbing up the mount to be able to put the flex joint on here. So the flex joint we're gonna be using is from Iron Rock Off-Road. They have a handful of these weld-on style ones. These are pretty simple. So essentially there's the uniball in the center here. Um, taking it apart, there is these side pieces that are gonna screw together to clamp the force on these poly bushings. Um, even though this is poly, this isn't actually what's flexing. It's pressing up against this ball and allowing it to rotate inside of it. Um, so we'll have that lubricated up with proper poly grease. Um, and then this piece here, uh, we're gonna remove all the insides and go ahead and design some brackets to be able to weld this on. It's also greasable, um, so we'll put a grease circle in there so we can keep it uh, clean and lubricated. For that, I'm gonna go to the trusty scrap bag. All right, I think I may have settled. I'm gonna use this piece here. If I cut it off right here and mount that flat on the truss, I can notch inside to be able to mount the ball in there. And I think that'll work out pretty well. And then we'll just cap the front and back. All right, so now that I've got my main piece squared, I'm ready to roll. The next point is we're going to cut a portion out to be able to interlock the flex joint into it um, to get a little bit stronger union. 
Um, so I'm gonna use this trace onto the piece of metal here, um, cut it with the angle grinder, and then smooth it out. All right, so taking the angle grinder, we got that roughed in there. Um, we're gonna go ahead and also, this piece that we cut off the top, we're gonna cut that and make front and back plates for it. I'm gonna go ahead and tack it together, um, test fit it on the truss and see how it looks. So now that I got all my parts cleaned up, went ahead and cleaned all the mill scale off of them with the grinder. Uh, we'll go ahead and go back and clean them up with some acetone before we tack them together. Um, this just make sure that there's no um, leftover residue from any oils um, or anything on the metal that would contaminate the welds. got all tied together, one of my greaser facing forward. Um, just kind of a basic overview of it. We'll go test fit it real quick. And as soon as we confirm that it fits nice, we'll go ahead and burn the whole thing together. So we got this thing all welded up. Um, I took my time to weld it since it is such a small piece. Um, didn't want it to get super hot and warped. Um, so just did a small section at a time, moved along, moved along, um, but we got it sitting here cooling because it is absolutely red hot right now. Um, after it cools off, I am going to grind the bottom back completely flush to make sure it sits flat on the truss, um, and then we'll go ahead and burn it onto the truss. So unfortunately, a little bit of weld did penetrate actually inside of the flex joint, so I need to grind that smooth so the bushings can fit in. Back underneath the car, um, we have our mount made, and we already have the top of the truss cleaned off. So next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and clean these off with uh, some acetone, get them ready. For my grease cirque to be facing out front. All right, that looks perfect. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tack it on and then burn it in. So now it's time to let that cool. Um, once it's cool, we'll wipe it off with some acetone, um, go ahead and paint it up, and finish the assembly. All right, so for paint, I like to use this Rust-Oleum hammer. That's what the whole axle is painted with. Um, just lasts a little bit longer than general spray paint and leaves a decent finish. While we're waiting for this to dry. We're gonna go ahead and drill out that control arm to a half inch to make sure. On the front, we're assembling this flex joint. Now we're just going to take this up the control arm, pop it back on. Now it doesn't line up exactly, you need the axle to rotate slightly forward. Uh, so we're going to use the jack back here to line it up. Create a bolt uh, with a nylon lock nut on it. Break it down. You're ready to roll. Unfortunately, it wasn't a, a good size bolt at a hardware store, um, so I did have to go a little extra long. Might cut it off later, but it doesn't interfere with anything, so it doesn't really matter. So, but we are all ready to rock and roll and start buttoning it back up.
Let me know if you guys liked today's video. If you did, I'll make another one, building the exhaust for my 1969 Chevy G10 with a 4x4 slot.